Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. I didn't really plan for this to be a makeup tutorial. I actually did a tutorial in my recent vlog. I will link that here in case you missed it. But I wasn't planning on this to be a makeup tutorial, but I kind of sat down and I just got into it. And so I am slapping my favorite beauty products of 2023. These are higher end beauty products, things that you can find at Ulta, Sephora. If you are interested in my drugstore favorites, I do have quite a few. A video is coming, but today we are talking about higher end beauty. I'm just into more makeup looks that just elevate my natural beauty. And we're gonna talk a lot about it in this video. The makeup trends that I leaned into this year, how makeup kind of got me through some of my darkest days. I know that sounds like so dramatic. If you're new here, this was a pretty tough year for me. If, if you've been watching my videos, you know, I dealt with the loss of my father this year. It was a, a tough year, but looking back, I made a lot of really big steps in the right direction. It was very transformative for me. And I have to say, sitting here and looking at myself in the monitor, like, ah, uh, as cringe, as cringy as it is, I am very proud of how far I've come. I'm proud of the woman that I've become, and I am proud of the progress that I've made and continue to make. A blessing to be able to sit here and look to my future and realize I have so much more work to do and I'm excited. Without further ado, let us hop into today's makeup beauty video. Again, using all of my favorite products, higher end products of 2023. We're gonna be doing high end today, but I promise drugstore is coming. So make sure you're subscribed and click the bell button next to it. This way you get a notification when that video goes up. But I have to say these slip hair ties I just like honestly am mad at myself for buying them because they are absurd in price, but they are oh so good. They come in an array of shades that match your hair. I mean, granted, this is not like the most perfect match for my hair, but it's not bad. I'm gonna add a little bit of lip balm. I'm using one that you can find at Sephora, but I gotta say my favorite one of the year was the Bioderma. This is the Laneige Lip Glowy Balm. This is like beautiful on days where you don't want to wear any kind of like lip look, like to just hydrate your lips. This gives a really juicy, like beautiful shine. So this is something that I purchased in 2023 and I'm a pretty big fan. But if you're someone who has like really terribly cracked lips, again, Bioderma is where it is at. Let us start off with foundation. Now, there were three foundations this year that I could not get enough of. And if you were with me, I'm pretty sure you could guess them. The NARS Skin Deep, I never ever thought that I would say this, but I fell in love with this foundation this year. It is so lightweight on the skin. It also has that like, matte effect to it and it kind of blurs your pores so it makes my pores smaller appear smaller than they actually are and it really mattifies the skin without making it feel too dry or too like i'm wearing makeup it really doesn't feel like anything it's really nice just do be sure to shake it if you're gonna buy it and also don't be shocked when you buy it because it doesn't come with a pump and you have to buy the pump separately. And I think that that's absurd, especially for the price of foundation. Like I love NARS and I don't like to talk poorly about NARS, but the fact that this doesn't come with a pump is a pretty big letdown. This is a thicker kind of formulation. It's kind of like a moussey consistency. A lot of the foundations that I tried this year have a thicker formulation to them. And I've always liked a thinner one. So this year was very eye-opening. This is pretty good for all skin types. In my opinion, coverage is light. Again, it just kind of makes your skin look like skin with a little bit of coverage and kind of just evens everything out. I'm gonna be wearing the foundation that has just been heavier in my rotation lately. I believe I tried this in 2022, but this is the Beauty Blender Bounce Skin Tint. I'm in the shade Light 3. And if you're interested in the shade that I am with NARS, Light uh, 4.5 Vienna. This is a thinner foundation. My skin really loves this all year round. So I do shake it. It comes with a dropper. It is a runnier formula right here. And I'm gonna apply this with my favorite brush. It's really between this and another hourglass brush, but this is one of the best purchases of this year. This is the hourglass. I think it's called the foundation brush, but just like the angle of it, the shape of it, the way it just, it's really good, especially for me. I have a pretty small face, 
but the way that this just applies the foundation you're gonna see it just like glides across the skin and it makes it look even more natural i can't explain it brushes are great and i think that technique is more important than the price point you pay for your brushes but guys these are just on a whole other level if you have the coin it's worth it i don't think you need it if you have the coin and you're looking to save time i would definitely invest in some hourglass brushes i don't know if you could see but it kind of just like takes that foundation and smooths it across the skin i have combo leaning more dry skin i personally like coverage that is light especially in a foundation but that i can build the coverage up using a concealer that's just my preference of makeup you know i like my skin to look like skin and i like my skin to be able to breathe this is just my kind of vibe. Another foundation that I used so much, especially in the beginning of this year, is the Charlotte's Beautiful Skin Foundation. I'm in the shade for neutral. I love this. I love the packaging. Plastic, very lightweight. This is perfect for travel. Mike and I are going to California soon. This is what I'm going to be taking with me. It's easy to travel with. I don't have to worry about it taking up too much room, about it making my bag, my travel makeup bag heavy. This is a little controversial. I find that a lot of people either love this or hate this. I love this. I think it's beautiful on the skin. I personally love to apply it with a brush. I honestly prefer to apply all of these foundations that I'm mentioning with a brush. I've kind of steered away from beauty blenders this past year. I don't know. If you're trying to be one, two, three quick, like I could see why you would want to use a beauty blender. But when I sit down, like, I don't know, just the thought of like getting up, going to the sink and dampening my beauty, beauty sponge, I don't know whatever could be a me thing it is a thick kind of like moussey formula sheer glow is like the thickest out of the three but this is the charlotte tilbury i do like to apply it on the back of my hand let it warm up to my skin to kind of thin it out it's more medium coverage definitely more coverage than the skin tint but again all of these foundations that i'm mentioning here today obviously are my favorites because i'm mentioning in my best of 2023 and i just couldn't get enough of them this year for concealer the dior forever skin correct i'm in the shade 1n if you've been with me you know i struggled for a while to find a concealer that went well with my skin i have very dry under eyes and i have very sensitive skin around my eyes i also have fine lines so a lot of the times i would find that concealer would kind of just move into my fine lines it would accentuate the dry textured skin under my eyes the reality is if you have fine lines your makeup's gonna move so long as you powder it you know that will prolong the longevity of your makeup to make sure that it doesn't move into your fine lines but you know i always say do i love getting older do I love waking up one day and like noticing something different about my skin? No, like it's not a great feeling, but honestly, I don't mind the lines around my eyes because it just, I laugh, I smile. I'm, I'm very expressive with my eyes and I wouldn't swap out my laughter to get rid of lines if that makes sense. Like, I don't know. It's just, they don't bother me for some reason. Everyone's different. I totally get it. This is a really beautiful concealer. And if you have dry skin also, this is hydrating. It does not dry out my skin. And again, it doesn't accentuate anything I don't want accentuated. I'm using this brush again because this is just how I've been using it. I use this with concealer. I use this with my foundation. I'm not gonna lie. I have not used this with contour or anything, but like the shape of this, like I could totally chisel out a cheek with this easily. Blushes that I tried this year. Merit blushes are by far my favorite. These were definitely on repeat a lot this year. Lighter shade Stockholm was my favorite, especially in the spring and summer months. There's just something so youthful about this extreme light pink now you can use this multiple ways i do use this multiple ways i will take this and kind of just draw it on my skin but most of the time i do go ahead and pick it up from the product with the with a brush which i will show you but like now that the winter months are here i really have been leaning into this persimmon this is a beautiful it looks very dark but it's not too dark and i've showed you guys this before but i like to pick it up with a brush like so just because i feel like you have a bit more control i'm going to stamp this onto the skin they are pigmented 
but they don't go on and kind of just like smack you with pigmentation like the other one that I'm about to show you. Like the color is just so beautiful that you make it work. But these are kind of like foolproof. I say it all the time. Merit is one of my favorite beauty brands. I have shared products with so many people. I was actually talking to my sister-in-law last night. We went out to dinner and we were talking about Merit and she fell in love with the brand because one day I went over to her house. She wanted to put together a little makeup routine. I was so honored that she recruited me because because you guys know I love makeup. So I brought all my Merit products over. She ended up placing an order and she told me last night that she's running low on her terracotta blush and that she's gonna place a new order. But it's just like simple, everyday, beautiful kind of makeup that's easy if you're on the go. Easy, simple, foolproof makeup. And that's kind of, that was kind of my vibe in 2023. Kind of like get in, get out and get on with your day. So again, this is the shade persimmon that I applied. And you guys have seen me apply this so many times, the shades .com. Merit is also clean beauty. And I'm just gonna reiterate and be annoying. If you are interested in Merit products and you have heard about the brand from me, or maybe I showed you a product that you are more interested in, I am an affiliate with Merit. So I'm gonna leave my link down below. If you could just copy the link into your browser, shop via that link. I do make a small commission from the brand and I would really appreciate your support. I really don't get paid to do these videos. So, you know, I would like to do this more often. And if you could pay my bills a little bit more, you'll get more videos from me. Kind of like a win-win situation. Tower 28, I have sang Tower 28's praises, their Beach Please blushes. I can't get enough of them. Not the first year that I tried the formulation. I have two shades, you've seen them before. I have a ratchet ass looking light pink one that I think is in Happy Hour. I also have a plum shade that is in, uh, I don't remember, but I will put them down below, but I have a plum one, I have a bright pink one. And then this year I purchased this one during one of the Sephora VIB sales. This is in the shade Rush Hour. It is a beautiful peachy tone. This is just like so flattering for me. I wear this all year round, no matter what season it is. I'll put a little bit of this on, but with these, you need to be careful. I pick up like the idiotic bit because these are so pigmented. I will never forget the first time that I tried one of these blushes from Tower 28. I picked it up with a brush and I went in and I put it on and oh my God, I ended up looking like a clown. I tried to blend it out as much as I could, but it just was, it was not blending. So I had to redo my makeup and it was like, it was a learning moment, you know? But just so you know, these are very pigmented. They're beautiful. They last a really long time. I love the formula. These are a little bit thicker than Merit. Merit has more of like a slip to it, whereas these are more of a gel consistency. This was the year of bronze, as you cannot tell by any means, because I am the color of a ghost. I tried a lot of bronzing products, and I gotta say, I love them all. Let's start off with contour. I have two here, very different in my opinion. Patrick Ta, I remember I bought this around the time Mike and I went to Miami. I think it was the end of January, February. I was like, I'm not gonna get this. I'm not gonna get this. Finally, just like bit the bullet and I bought this. And I love this for traveling, a cream contour, and then a powder bronzer on the bottom. These shades are stunning. Now, as fair as I am, I'm in She Sculpted, which I believe is considered Patrick Ta's like medium range. You know what, do I wanna contour with this? I think I do. Let me grab my brush and we'll do this together. This is my favorite brush to use with this product. This is the Real Techniques Expert Face Brush. And I go in here, obviously, because I'm showing you. I use this to kind of just sculpt my cheeks. Now, this is a really beautiful contour shade. You don't need to use a lot. You could just use a little, but what's really nice is that this is very buildable. This is a very foolproof product. It puts on the right amount. It's never too much. It doesn't go on patchy. It doesn't go on too pigmented. If you don't know much about makeup, Makeup. Contour is just supposed to be a shadow. It places a shadow underneath your jaw to help make your jaw look a little bit more snatched. So that's exactly what I'm doing here. I'm just adding shadow under my jawline and it adds a shadow to the forehead to help make forehead appear a little bit smaller, a little bit into my brow bone. 
put it on the sides of my nose. I'm not going in so crazily, really chiseling out my face. I don't know. That was also a shift in me this year. I like shadow to help give a little bit of dimension, but I don't like harsh lines. I kind of like a more youthful look to the face. And I feel like that's more flattering for my face. You know, I don't have like the roundest face, but I definitely have a rounder face. I don't, does that even make any sense? I don't know. Like it's not like so round, but I just find that sometimes rounder faces don't, we don't look good with such chiseled features. I'm gonna apply the powder with you in just a moment, but I do wanna also mention this product. Now, when I first tried this, I didn't really love it, but I have been, this has been on heavy rotation. This is the NARS Laguna Cream Bronzer. I have used this so many times, so many times. What I didn't like about it, it would go on too pigmented and then I would need to spend too much time blending. And I have other products that blend out one, two, three. I am going to mention one in just a second, but I started using it with a fluffier brush. This is the It Cosmetics Unstoppable Powder Brush. See how fluffy it is? It's not too dense. See, this is more of a dense brush. This is more fluffy because it's a powder brush. I'm just going to add it to my forehead. This is a bronzer. So I want to show you on one side of my face and then we can compare it to the Patrick Ta that I just put on. And I'm going to put this all in the same spots but I'm gonna kind of like bring it up on the jaw a little bit because bronzer is like where the sun would naturally hit you, whereas contour, you want it to be like a shadow. So bronzing will contribute to that shadow likeness. Does that make sense? Am I, I feel like you, I feel like if you're with me, you're with me, you know? Bronzer has a little bit of warmth to it. So can you see the difference between this side of my face and this side of my face? This is like chiseled, but now this is chiseled with a little bit of color. I don't look as ghostly. I look a little bit more healthy. So two different products, but I kind of like keep cream contour, cream bronzer in the same kind of like realm. No, they're not the same but I just, that's how I grouped them for this video. And then I'm gonna take what's ever on the brush and put it over my nose because that is where the sun would hit you. Oh gee, I love this. Now this is a stick. I have a, another stick from Merit and I will show you the two, but this is a contour stick. Here is the shade. The way that this blends, it blends out in seconds and it looks so natural. It's so beautiful. It's so creamy. When you blend it out, it does kind of lean a little bit more taupey. Contour is more gray, kind of like taupey shades, whereas a bronzer is meant to be a little bit warmer. So I love this. I use this to contour my face. I do have a code with them if you're interested in saving some money. I'll put my code down below. But if you're someone that just likes to draw on your face, one, two, three, I think this is great. This is more of a bronzing shade, leans more warm, and this is way more emollient. Merit just has more of a slip to it. How do you see? That is way more warm than the OG. OG is definitely a cool toned, whereas this is warm. You know what I'm saying? Both really great products, but different in my opinion. So this gives warmth to the skin. I highly recommend this. Again, if you're interested, please be sure to use my link down below. And if you're interested in OG, I have a coupon. I think you can save 15% off. So these are both really good. Again, simple one, two, three, draw on your skin and go, which was very much my vibe this year. And I can't say enough good things. I think if you are more new to makeup, I would recommend Merit, but either one of these, again, they blend really beautifully. But if you're someone that just wants to cover the basics, I would get this. This is the Bronze Balm in Clay. And to powder, I'm gonna use my Givenchy Prism Libre. This was my favorite powder this year. And I think that this is the first year I'm not talking about Laura Mercier. Although I am talking about her because I'm mentioning her and that is just like my OG, like all time favorite powder. But this year I really fell in love with this Givenchy Prism Libre and I have number two, Satin Blanc. And I have these powder puffs that I bought on Amazon that, oh my God, game for game changing. Beautiful, especially again, if you are someone that has a lot of fine lines or dry skin, like it's not too drying of a powder. And I know that sounds a little weird, but it's not too cakey. It's very finely milled. So it doesn't bring up texture to the surface. I really like to put powder on the sides and kind of just put it on the sides of my nose. I know baking like isn't a thing anymore, but baking is great when you want your makeup to last all day long. It doesn't need to be a trend. Do you know what I'm saying? It's just like a good makeup technique. 
And powder, think of it honestly as like an eraser. It can help clean up product. So if you went in a little too much with the nose contour, which I really didn't, I did like a janky job. So I'm kind of like doing my contour in reverse. I don't know, but it's just something that I do. I'm taking off the powder with this Scott Barnes brush and I'm just gonna flick it up. And now I'm gonna remove any of the excess powder. My other hourglass brush that I fell in love with this year, this dual ended brush has really become my best friend. I feel like this has really sped up my makeup routine in like the best ways possible. And it's such a good travel companion as well. This is basic. These two are basic. This is nothing new, but you know, I have to mention it because I used the shit out of this this year. This is the NARS Laguna bronzer. And I'm just gonna use this to, oh, I said I wanted to use Patrick. All right, we're gonna lay this down a little bit. But I find like this just gives my skin in life. You know when you're done with your makeup and then you look and you're like something's missing and you're not sure what's missing? Throwing this on at the end sets everything because it's powder but also gives my skin life. I will throw on a little bit of Patrick Ta. They are very similar in shade, the two of them. I don't feel like that is by coincidence that I love them, obviously, but those two shades are very, very close. If you have to pick between the two, I would get this rather than the NARS because you're getting two products for the price of one, but that's just me. You know I love a multi-purpose palette. I lowered the light a little bit and my camera needed a minute because she was overheating as, you know, she does pretty often. But I can't say anything bad about it because I also overheat often as well. I did one brow off camera and I have to say, my brows are bushy, they are natural, and I feel like they're in a really good spot and I'm happy with them. And I think that that's all that matters. But I did this brow off camera and you can't really tell the difference. It kind of just looks like this brow, but like enhanced. I feel like when you take a picture on your iPhone and you hit the enhance, it's like that. The two products that I loved on a lot this year definitely merit the brow pomade. I fell in love with this technique. I don't know why I didn't think about this earlier. I used to fill in my brows first with a pencil and then go in with a gel afterwards. And I just found, like one day I honestly just woke up and was like, I feel like this is a bit counterintuitive. Why not brush the brows up to where I want them? with a gel and then fill them in. Reminds me so much of the Beverly Hills, the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Wiz, but this is from Araceli, BB Brow in the shade Dark Brown. It has a very small pencil, it really creates those hair-like strokes, those very natural hair-like strokes. It's just more forgiving in my eyes than the Brow Wiz. I think it draws over, um, What's that called? Oh my God, what am I saying? Think of the words. Sometimes I struggle to think of words. It draws over the gel really nicely. It kind of just has more of like a powdery look to it than the brow is, in my opinion. And they don't need to be perfect. I'm over perfection, guys. I don't know what it is. I think between turning 30, I'm now 32, but turning 30 uh, two years ago, obviously, that's easy math, math that I can do. Turning 30 two years ago and losing my dad this year, I'm kind of just over it. It is what it is. If I can just leave my house, feel like myself, but like elevated, I'm not striving per for perfection anymore because I don't think that perfect brows and perfection will make me happy. Anyway, I totally skipped this, but. I'm gonna use the smaller side of this brush to apply Dolce Vita. This is by NARS. Again, this blush has been around for a lifetime, but I do stamping motions as such. Just like stamping it into the face. I put a little bit into the crease and I just think that this is a really pretty color. Another classic staple. I don't know what it is, but I just, I love NARS. Their powders are beautiful. Morphe Continuous Setting Spray. This will never change. I tried many setting sprays this year and none of them compare. Okay, another blush that I loved on a lot this year was ZC. Now you can get this on Amazon and I don't really know what category to put this in. So I think I'm gonna put this in both a drugs, in my drugstore video and this video. I think this is a little pricey. You can get it on Amazon, but I think this is like $18. There's a cat in it. I love it. It's very peachy. This was my powder blush of the summer. There's just something so like lively about it. Like, can you see? It just like gives my cheek 
light. It adds a little bit of sheen to it. It has a glow. Can you see the glow? I don't really venture into eyeshadow too often because I am a basic bitch and I love my NARS eyeshadows and like I, on a day-to-day -day basis, I don't wear eyeshadow. Honestly, if I do anything, I take a little bit of my bronzer and I put it into the crease of my eye just to give a little bit of dimension. But this year, I loved these two eyeshadow palettes. Again, these are from the same brand, ZC. They have two cats on the front of them. I love the packaging super cute i wish that we could take both of these palettes and put them into one i like a light brown and a dark brown and i also like a peachy tone but this shimmer is beautiful stunning if we could put this together this would be like the ultimate palette i'm gonna go into this kitty cat one i'm just gonna take this light brown it's a really nice shade obviously you will see them applied to my eyes let me bring you in a bit this year was a tough year for me we don't need to really like reflect on it because i talk about it a lot in my vlogs but if you want to know me <laughs> like really know me. I would suggest watching my vlogs. I lost my dad in January. That has really shaped my makeup this year. Didn't really find myself wearing any eye makeup for the first half of this year because I would just cry at the drop of a hat. I still kind of do, honestly. And like in thinking about it, I feel it like <laughs> surfacing in my throat um especially because when i'm filming this tomorrow is christmas eve and it's gonna be my first holiday without my dad and my dad makes all the food on christmas eve um not all the food but the majority of the food when i think about these things i get a little choked up i'm gonna go into the other palette grab the darker brown on a flat brush put this in the outer third and then bring it in. It has really shaped my eye makeup look. I find that like I wear a lot less eyeshadow, but then when I do wear eyeshadow, I definitely am more modest in the application. And I think it's more flattering on my eyes. I have small eyes. Like I like that. I just a simple like kiss of eyeshadow. Again, if you're someone who likes to wear a lot of eyeshadow, that's totally fine. But I just feel like it's more flattering for my face. It's more flattering for my lifestyle. I'm gonna hop into that light brown again, and I'm just gonna use this to help lightly soften the edges. You have to see this for yourself. Look at that, it's so pretty, an effortless pretty. And I love that it's, there's no like base shade to it. It's just a see-through shadow, which is hard to come by and really flattering. And it just gives, like a kiss of sparkle, but it's not overwhelming and it's not like too much. It's just fitting the vibe. Lancome Lash Doll, there is no better mascara than this mascara, even though I didn't wear a lot of mascara this year. My dad had really bushy brows and I feel like this year embraced them. I think makeup is great and you should use makeup however you see fit, but I don't find myself looking to makeup to change my face anymore. I look to makeup to enhance my features. And I am loving my features more than ever. As a woman, you learn to love yourself more and kind of just accept who you are and where you're at. I think that loss plays a really big role into that as well. You never know what tomorrow brings. So be present, be in the moment, be grateful. I try to be grateful as much as I can. I look like my dad, like I resemble my dad. I am my dad's daughter. So makeup has just been healing for me in so many ways. And it's I'm trying to not get emotional here. I feel more accepting of myself and embracing who I am as a person and my features, how I look, how I feel. It's been a very transformative year for me. And for that, I'm grateful. You know, you gotta be grateful. You gotta look on the bright side of everything because if you don't look on the bright side of things, how do you get through things? I'm not quite sure. I'm wondering if you can tell the difference between my two eyes because I did apply, apply, I did apply. I did apply a little bit of highlighter on this eye. I love this highlighter. Huh. This is the Pillow Talk by Charlotte Tilbury. How beautiful is this packaging? Oh my lanta. I've been taking a little pencil brush. This is by Firma205. I take this shade right here. I use all of them on my eyes all the time, but this is definitely my favorite shade, this champagne one. Put it in the inner corner like that, a little bit under my entire brow. And then I take my finger and I blend it just to make it look a little bit more natural. Also love this. Look at this, look at this. That's right there on the Cupid's bow. Did she get lip injections? No. A little bit up here, a little bit on my chin. I don't need it because my, my cheeks look nice and dewy and glowy, but I'm taking my fan brush and I kind of just 
pick it all up. I don't know who she is, but there's something like really pretty about it. If you would like to see all of the lip products I have my hands in, I recently did a dupes video. I will link it up here. I did a high end and a low end lipstick video, a lot of tinted lip balms. That was my vibe. Never thought I'd say this. In 2023, I embraced my lips. It's all about embracing. 2023 was the year of your girl needs a hug. And so I hugged up on myself, but I did love lip liners. I tried Anastasia Beverly Hills this year. This is in Muted Mauve. Matches the shadows of my face. So it's good for like contouring the lips. It's a very natural looking lip liner for me. And then I also have Hazelnut, a little less pink, both flattering shades. If you're someone with fair to medium skin tone, let's use Muted Mauve tonight. I love them. They have this like square, shape to them so it's nice to grip. So I'm just gonna line my lips as I normally would, which I don't go all the way in. I kind of just line the very bottom and then I line the very top. I don't line in this section because I find that it makes my mouth look more mature. Again, I loved on a lot of lipsticks. I'm gonna swatch them all for you, but there, there's more than just this, but I picked the top of the top, top tier. I looked at my collection and was like, if I can only pick a few, what would they be? Lawless, unbelievable. Formulation of this is unlike anything. The way that it plumps the lips and kind of has that like sheerness to it, it is freakishly unbelievable. So good. Your lips will go from shriveled, sad, to plump and delicious in seconds. Brune Paul such a beautiful peachy pink really beautiful everyday color i wore her so much the first half of this year and then i kind of moved into tinted lip balms here is one dior 001 i know i was like what do you need to spend 40 dollars on this for um i don't know but once you try it you, there's no going back beautiful it really just like makes your lips look like your lips but better again the embracing takes the color of them and kind of just adds a punch to the pigmentation, also feels really nice, has a minty feel to it, plumps them, all that kind of good stuff, and it like makes them plushy. So these two, it sits in your lips and it plumps them from the inside out. So it pushes the fine lines of your lips out and makes them look delicious. And then this lipstick from Yensa, mm. I love the packaging, it's very fun. This is definitely more of a spring summer shade for me. It's really light, it's like a Barbie pink. It is so hydrating and it makes my mouth just look so youthful because of the color. Kind of has the same effect on my face as the Stockholm blush. It kind of just makes your lips look like they're blushing. Lip gloss, I didn't want to mention the Lip Collagen Baths by Charlotte Tilbury because I mention them all the time. This year I really, really enjoyed Fenty in the shade Fussy. Again, has that plumping, from within effect. This color is by far my favorite color. I have a little mini travel size, so this is great to travel with. Throw it in my purse, doesn't take up too much space. Let's put Brune Paul on by Laura Mercier. It's such a good color. And then my lips are dry, so you know what? I am gonna go in with a little bit of Fenty. And that, my friend, is a really comfortable, juicy lip that would look beautiful with any and every makeup look. Let me know down below in the comments, what do you think about this makeup look? What were some of your favorite beauty products this year? I would love to hear them. I hope that you are ringing in the new year with those that you love and a really good mindset and a healthy mental health state. If you're not, like I always say, move your body, get some fresh air, try to be grateful even when it's hard. I think that that is something that got me through my darkest days this year and just fill your day with things that you enjoy. You know, I talk about how much I love makeup, skincare, I've really gotten back into reading. I've read some really awesome books this year. Sprinkle little things that make you happy every day. Enjoy life as much as you can. This might be annoying and hard to hear if you're going through a hard time, but these were things that helped me. And I do just want to say thank you so much for spending this year with me. Thank you so much for being someone that listens and, you know, letting me lean on you because I know that I, I leaned on you guys a lot this year. I look back on my vlogs this year and a lot of them were therapeutic. It was always a therapy session, just like this video was. So thank you so much. I love you so, so much. Happy new year, happy holidays. I can't wait to see what 2024 has in store for us. I love you guys and I really hope to see you in my next one. Bye.